Hello you dirty dogs and welcome back to One on One, the most in-depth football show on YouTube. On today's episode we're going to take a close look at four players from three different leagues who are absolutely slaying it on loan. Earlier this week I put out a tweet and these players were by far the most common suggestions. Before we delve in, a quick favour, if you will. If you learn something new in this video, please do hit that like button. For one thing, I want to know that I'm adding value. And secondly, it really does help with the algorithm. Let's get started. Conor Gallagher. At the time of writing, 21-year-old Conor Gallagher has featured in seven of Crystal Palace's eight Premier League games so far, clocking up three goal contributions in the process. That's only one short of what he managed in 28 league starts on loan at West Brom last season. With Kiate and MacArthur playing alongside him in Patrick Vieira's 4-3-3, Gallagher has a little more license to roam, let's say. Although he does a lot of his work on that right-hand side, as illustrated by this heat map. Until Odds and Edwards' arrival, Gallagher was leading his side for shots, taking a very healthy 2.7 per 90 in league play. That's more than Romelu Lukaku is putting up for parent club Chelsea. And these aren't wayward attempts from distance either, with Gallagher hitting the target 50% of the time. The only player with a better conversion rate at the club is Frenchman Odson Edouard. Now, what Gallagher truly excels at is channeling that frenetic energy into shot creation. At the time of writing, he's putting up four shot creating actions per 90, which is even more than Wilfred Zaha. And impressively, his tenacity off the ball mirrors his efficacy on it. For example, Gallagher's 2.4 tackles per 90 is only bettered by Tyreek Mitchell in the whole Crystal Palace squad. This isn't wholly surprising when you take a closer look at the team's defensive pressures, with only James MacArthur putting up more than Gallagher. Add in the 2.15 blocks he makes per 90, and a clear picture presents itself. Off the ball, he's an absolute nuisance. Tantalisingly, can't help feel like there's more to come as well. Now his medium to long distribution could use some work, with only Christian Benteke failing to find a teammate more often. Also, given how much time he spends around the opposition's box, his passing could be a little more probing. The Chelsea loanee has only found a teammate inside the opponent's penalty area four times this season, which is the same as right back Joel Ward. Maybe that'll be something we see increase as he builds a rapport with Odson Edouard. Now, there's been no reports of an option to buy once Gallagher's season loan deal is up. And I imagine come next summer, he won't be short of suitors as well if he carries on playing as he is. Perhaps a Leicester if Tielemans doesn't sign that new deal. Or maybe a Wolves, who are desperately in need of depth at central midfield. Plus, with new rules soon coming into play about how many players a club can loan out in any one given season, Chelsea will start having to dissemble their loan army. Gallagher's current market value is £13.5 million according to Transfermarkt. If he carries on as is, I'm sure Marina Granovskaya will be asking for closer to 20. Where do you think he should go? Let me know in the comments. Brahim Diaz. When Hakan Shalanoglu opted not to sign a new deal and long-term target Nikola Vlasic went to West Ham for mega bucks, the Rosanieri responded by triggering an extension in Brahim Diaz's loan deal, keeping him at the club for another two seasons for a paltry 3 million euros. Failing to get those aforementioned targets has proved a blessing in disguise for both club and player with the 22-year-old contributing to four goals in his first six starts, playing 10 in Stefano Pioli's 4-2-3-1 system. And if you were keeping an eye on Diaz's form at the end of last season, then his start wouldn't be that surprising to you. He finished in Serie A with seven goal contributions from a respectable 15 starts, but it was the tail end of the campaign where he really began to build up a head of steam. And a bit like Gallagher, you sense that there's much more to come the more minutes he gets. A crafty yet hard-working wide man, Diaz actually reminds me on occasion of his countryman Pedro. Not only is he direct, quick on the ball and well capable of completing over two dribbles per 90, he's also a really hard worker off the ball. For context, he's putting up 19 pressures per 90. That's five more than Chalanoglu is managing at Inter Milan. In short, this is a young man working his socks off to make sure he stays in the starting 11. Now, at 0.75 goal contributions per 90, I have to admit, he's probably running a little hot at the moment. However, if he maintains his current underlying numbers, still a very impressive 0.52 expected goals and assists per 90, he's set for a very productive season. Now, at current, when I look at Diaz's numbers, I feel like he's being a bit conservative in his build-up play, which is understandable given he's only just broken in 
to that starting eleven. However, if he wants to cement himself as one of Serie A's better winger come playmakers in the mould of Lorenzo Insigne, he needs to be a bit braver on the ball. His six progressive carries, which is moving the ball five yards towards the opponent's goal or entering the penalty area, is a league average, as is his general passing into the penalty area. Hopefully the competition with Daniele Maldini brings out the best in him. Now Milan have an option to buy at the end of his loan deal for 22 million euros, which is pretty sound value in today's market. However, Real Madrid can then buy him back for 27 million euros. And if Diaz takes off over the next two seasons and Eden Hazard continues to trend right down along with maybe Asensio, they may well contemplate bringing him back as a useful squad player. Jota. Now, before João Pedro Neves Felipe, otherwise known as Jota, joined Celtic in the dying embers of the summer window, the 22-year-old's career was in decay. Despite being hailed as one of the best talents to emerge from Benfica's academy in the last decade, Jota only managed one Primera Liga start for Benfica before being shipped out to a poor Real Valladolid side in the 2021 season. The winger went from being the top goal scorer at the Under-19 Championship in 2018 and the Liga Pro Young Player of the Year in the 18-19 campaign to Benfica's fourth choice left winger with no prospects on the horizon. What's Portuguese for comeback? In his first five SPFL games, Jota has contributed to four goals, which is the second best total at the club. His impact hasn't been confined to the domestic scene either, with the Portuguese winger contributing to two goals in three Europa League outings. In the top flight, he leads the side for shots on 3.8 per game. 2.6 of those come from inside the penalty area. For context, that's 1.5 more than Ryan Christie managed in the 2021 season. As a creator, his numbers are slightly more middling, with his 1.8 key passes per game only good enough for 14th in the division. However, this metric rises to three per game in the Europa League, a team high. This is a pattern that repeats itself when you take a closer look at his dribbling numbers. In league play, the tricky winger is only beating his man once per 90, but in the Europa League, that skyrockets to three. That's the same as Leon's Hussem Awa. I imagine that's because teams in Europe are happy to leave him one-on-one -on -one with the fullback for the time being, whereas in domestic play, teams often deploy a low block against Celtic. So in terms of areas to improve on, perhaps finding a way to pull apart a sitting defence is something the whole Celtic forward line can focus on. I imagine this will become more apparent the more he plays with Kyogo, Rogic and Abada. He actually told the press after the Ferenc Varos game that if Kyogo doesn't learn English, he's going to have to learn Japanese. That's his commitment to the assist. He also needs to tighten up his defensive contribution, particularly in European games, with Celtic's left-back position so porous. But that is likely to come as his fitness improves too. Lest we forget, this is a guy that only started eight top-flight games before his move to Celtic. I think the boys have pulled off a bit of a masterstroke here with a £6.5 million option to buy cooked into that loan contract. If you listen hard enough, you can already hear Southampton and Wolves making tentative inquiries in the summer of 2022. Angisa. Since leaving Marseille for Fulham in a £22 million deal in the summer of 2018, I think it's safe to say that Anguissa has found himself constantly playing below his level. After a fairly poor campaign where a poor Fulham were relegated from the Premier League, he was loaned out to Villarreal where he rehabilitated his reputation somewhat by helping steer the Yellow Submarine to fifth place. He then returned to Fulham once more in 2021, again suffering relegation with the club. However, this time people began to take more notice of his individual performances rather than the team's results, or lack of them. Not only was he completing a team-high 4.1 tackles and interceptions, he was completing a mind-bending 3.3 dribbles per 90 from the base of midfield. They're numbers that a very productive winger would put up. Because of Fulham's defensive fragility, teams were obviously pressing them super high, and Anguissa, more often than not, was evading that press with his unbelievable footwork. Now, after starting the season in the Championship, he finds himself in the starting 11 of a Napoli side that are top of Serie A following game week seven. And I found a quote from his new manager, Luciano Spalletti, 
that I think sums up his unique skill set perfectly. Don't talk about him, leave him hidden. Now at the time of writing, Napoli have only conceded three goals in league play. The best defensive record. Guess who's playing a big part in that? Now the Cameroon international is still bedding himself into that starting 11, but he's already completing a highly respectable 3.3 tackles and interceptions per 90. A total only bettered by Mario Rui. He's also maintained those mazy dribbling numbers from the middle of the park, completing 2.2 per 90. The best for any central midfielder or defensive midfielder across the league. So what can he improve on? Well, to steal from Spalletti once more, he is a top player. He does everything, but he must improve his finishing and the final pass. You win games when you have the right players and serious professionals. He is the right person for this dressing room. It's been reported that on top of the initial 540k they paid Fulham to loan him for the season, there is a 15 million euro option to buy. Now that, my friends, is a bargain to land Anguissa in his peak years. It's those sort of deals that make me want to see the Scudetto head to the south. Now I couldn't go through all your suggestions but I do appreciate it when you get involved so props to all these on screen as well. That is the end of the show. I hope you enjoyed that breakdown of Lone Stars who are killing it this season. What should I do next week? Not next week, I'm away for two weeks. What should I do on the next episode let me know in those comments. Remember to like this video as it really does bloody help. Subscribe to EFD with notifications on so you don't miss another episode of... What's this show called? One on One. And until then, stay safe and I'll catch you next time.